looking forward to playing back-to-back -back weeks. Looking forward to opening OVC play this week uh, weekend, and you know, just playing uh, you know two two more home games in a row with something we hadn't had a lot of uh, recently. We hadn't had a lot of games in September at home, so be careful what you wish for. We got a lot of them in September, and we're on the road four out of the last five. So, uh, you know, we'll have to deal with that as well. But I think our team is is doing well. We're healthy. You know, we got better last week, so we're looking forward to. Playing again in, uh, at home, you know, it's nothing like playing in front of a home crowd and atmosphere is excellent. Let's like to say thank you to all our fans and everybody that goes into making a, a home game special. You know, the Southerners, the cheerleaders, cocky, just, uh, you just won't believe how many people you see in town. It is all my kids love coming and, you know, seeing everything at a home game and seeing cocky and all those things. So it's a special place and it's great to play at home. And I think we had a packed house the other night. So look for another packed house this week. And, you know, you just don't know what how much good that does our football team when you run out and the place is packed and you got an atmosphere. Uh, so it, it's it's something we're very, very proud of. and. And uh, just like to say thank you to everybody that goes in into making that happen. <laughs> I mean, it really is. I mean, it's, it's hard to get in a rhythm, you know, and you don't you don't know what your team, how much improvement your team's making with with the open weeks, and uh, you know, it goes back to you almost got to do, you know, definitely some fall camp type practices. Uh, you know, with some spring training type practices, just fundamental type stuff. But we got a balance on that because we went through that before. Um, and I think a young team this year has handled it, you know, pretty much the same as, as a, uh, a veteran team did last year. But it's kind of hard to tell. I mean, we, we didn't play Saturday, so you don't know how much improvement you did make. But, you know, we'll, we'll go a couple real, real fundamental, what we call our blue collar Tuesdays. We get a couple of those practices in. You know, during the week, and there's a lot of competition in those prices to keep game speed. So I think that's what it's about. You're only as good as the, the competition on your football team. You hear every football team, I think, in the country talk about that is, you know, the more competition you got in every position, even with special teams, you know, is, is how good your team will be. Because if those guys haven't got guys in their room that's pushing them to get better, uh, they're never going to be great themselves. So I, I feel like our competition is really good. So that's the reason I feel like we got better last week. So I think we got to just, you know, we found ways to do that in open weeks. I'm interested to see how this team does that, you know, down the stretch playing back to back weeks. I mean, I think it goes back to the injury situation. I mean, I, we had almost a dozen guys that, that had trouble practicing the first open weeks, and that's just kind of, you know, how it goes in football. You just never know. So, you know, what we call, you know, just uh, the muscle beach, the guys that, you know, uh, can't do some competition stuff, can't practice really, they go into what we call muscle beach over there. And you got about a dozen of those guys in muscle beach the first off week. Last week you look over and you ain't got hardly any guys over there. So. Uh, out of those dozen, the first week, yeah, it'd been probably four or five of them probably may have had trouble playing if we had a game on Saturday. You know, this week we're we could everybody could have played. You know, we were back full strength wise, healthy by Saturday. So that's where the nine game stretch kind of gets you. You don't know there's going to be a game in there where you're going to have, you know, ten or ten or so, you know, banged up, and will they get back by that Saturday or not? And that's where the depth of your football team, I think, comes in and. Uh, that helps with the depth, but also, like you said, competition. But any specific area, I think the biggest thing that sticks out to me is probably special teams. I think we've got more competition on special teams right now than maybe we ever have. And that goes back to, you know, I think we're a deep football team, but also the red shirt rule kind of helps you there too. And uh, I think that's one place that where, as the year goes on, typically, uh, you know, you have you try have trouble finding ways to compete special teams wise in practice, which makes you better. So that's one thing I think that we've gotten better at. I think he'll be back. You know, he's I, you know, he practiced some last week. I don't think he was 100 percent. Be able to tell you more probably by Wednesday, but I look for him to play Saturday. Now I don't know that he'll be a 100 percent, but I think he'll play for sure. Uh, for both the players, could you talk a little bit about what you've known about Tennessee Tech in the past, kind of a little bit about what their personality is. Yeah, I mean, I think they're a, they're a solid football team, um, you know, and even defense, they're um, physical up front, interior-wise. Uh, they're returning some uh, veteran guys up front, and I just think they're a physical football team, and 
you know, I think, I mean, you know, we all talk about it. I think our conference is, you know, gradually getting better, and on the, especially on the defense standpoint. And I just feel like we gotta, we gotta bring it this week, and hopefully it'll pay off. Yeah, um, even their offense is really physical, and they got some guys coming back on the O line, and uh, they're just an all-around good football team. And we just gotta bring it this week. Well, I mean, I, I think uh, they're not just a typical 0 and 3 team. You know, look at the record; don't indicate they've had a tough start. They probably had as tough a start as probably anybody in the country. You open up with Chattanooga, and you play Kennesaw State, and then you go to Utah State. So, you know, tough start for those guys. I, I think, you know, they're doing some things fundamentally for their program for the long run. I think is really good. They got a coaching change, so uh, they didn't, they didn't go in and just try to fix problem with. Uh, you know, transfer or junior college guys, they built it, they're building it with high school guys, and that's kind of what we built our program on. Our, our football team's 85% high school guys that we, we raised up here and, and developed, and I see them doing that. They're really, really a young football team. And so you see them fundamentally doing some things for their program that's going to pay off in the long run. They didn't look for quick fixes, and I think that's a philosophical thing that they made uh, made a decision on. This this really gonna pay off for them because you've heard me say it how many times? You know, you can't replace game experience. So when you got a freshman sophomore that's playing, they may be playing too early. You know, they may have a deficiency in their program where they ain't got older guys. But when that freshman sophomore plays, when that kid gets to be a junior senior, he's gonna be a really good football player just because he's got game reps under his belt. So I see them, you know, fundamentally doing what you got to do to be good in this league, I think, and they're building it high school-wise. And they're doing it that, – that takes patience to do that. But fundamentally, uh, I see them tackling and same thing, same thing you heard both of these guys say. They're, they're a physical football team. So they're, they're keeping things in front of them defensively. They're not stunting all over the place, getting out of gaps. They're making you drive the football. And uh, you know, counting on you to turn it over, them getting a stop, or you getting a penalty. So they're they got some patience there. They keep the ball in front of them, and they're getting the ball on the ground. Uh, I think the offensively, they're trying to find identity, but they're trying to find ways to run the football. So you're seeing a b bunch of personnel groupings. Uh, you, you're seeing a lot of different formations, uh, trying to create graps, gaps to try to run the ball. And uh, like I said, I think that's part of their youth as well. But I, I think they got good young players that are only going to get better. And I'm sure they're excited about playing their first conference game uh, as, as well. What do you know about their, their coach? He's a veteran guy. He is. He's, uh, you know, I can't talk about age much because I'm an older guy too. So, I mean, I don't think he's that old. You know, so he's been around a while. He's a, he's a local guy. He's been there on staff with, with Watson Brown. And uh, so, you know, he's got a good football IQ, you know, just by, by the folks that he's been around. You tell that by the way his team plays. So, the thing I see about them, they're a young, hungry football team. Uh, they don't give up. You know, they, they've been out of some games. Uh, but the thing I notice about teams, it kind of tells you about the team. When the team gets down, how do they respond to that? And I've seen their, their team play hard in the fourth quarter. When you look at the scoreboard, the game's over. Uh, but, you know, we teach our guys, don't look at the scoreboard. You play every play like it's your last. And uh, I think they're doing that as a football team. So it tells me they got good character on their team and they're well coached. Tyler, he's kind of a leader of the offensive line two off weeks over three weeks, that's got to be tough for continuity. But what have you guys done to try to maintain what you have? I just feel like, you know, we've came every day and uh, came to work. I feel like we handled these two bye weeks better than we did last year. Um, like Coach Gross said, we know we have some tough practices in there and we just tried to dominate the line of scrimmage. And I'll just, you know, give props to our defense because I feel like every day I go against the best D-line in the country, whether it be Randy, Montrez, or Connor Christian. and. You know, they make game days easy. I just feel like as a leader, you know, I try to take the um, take practice, you know, full speed as it is game day because, you know, once we stopped playing, we had 13 days till we played again, you know. That's tough to go. That's tough to uh, prepare for, and I just feel like we handled it the right way. The last time we saw you guys play, the line had a really good day, a uh, lot of improvement over the, the previous week. I know it's only been two games, but – if I were to ask you to give a grade, what would you give your offensive line so far? When we're healthy, I'd give us probably an A minus, A plus. Definitely, um, you know, we got three guys inside that are really physical, and 
I feel like, you know, the young tackles are starting to come along now. They're starting to buy into the process. You know, Sosby, he's gradually getting better every game. And, you know, Nuka Yobo and uh, Michael Shaddix, you've seen him in their last game, and he done really well. And um, I feel like Tyree Slocum and uh, DeAndre Butler and Cam and all them, they're coming along really good. And I feel like, if anything, those bye weeks help them more, you know, because they got that first game experience, you know, against a and at week zero. And they just went into those weeks and got better. Coach, could you talk about the offensive line? Because I think we're, we're in the past you you had some some star level guys there, and now it seems like we're talking about more guys, and more guys are doing some things that are getting noticed. Well, I mean, I think we're deeper. Uh, I've said this the last couple of years. We our depth has been really good, and I think we recruited well, and those young guys can really play. And you lose veteran guys, you know, like Lee and Klein. You you just you you worry about how those next guys are going to step in. But I think Coach Revis and you know guys like Skiz has done a really good job of developing these young guys. You know, in practice and getting them better. And you know, we threw some freshmen in the fire. We had some injuries going into the A and T game and uh, the week of the game. So uh, you know two major injuries so you had some true freshmen and redshirt freshmen having to play in that game and they handled that situation really well I don't think they played bad to be as young as they are and uh, they um, went into those open weeks like Zorro said they went in and got better because uh, you can't you know you're dealing with unknown especially when you're talking about a young kid that had never played college football and you throw them in a game like that they see exactly where their deficiencies are and what they got to fix so they got a knowledge of what the, how they got to get better so I do think the open weeks did help them and I think they're growing up we got good senior leadership up there of guys that have played and you know know understand how you got to get better in the process through the year and then uh, we got some young guys that are you know, battling because there is competition. It goes back to the competition we got at every position. I think O-line, it's there. It's, it's a battle to see who's going to start on Saturday. So, you know, that makes you better because you got you got to come every day and practice and, and, and get after it. Tyler, I, I know you've been here a long time. I think your, your freshman year was 1981. Was that it? No, but being a veteran guy, especially now that you lost some veteran guys, how much emphasis do you place on leadership now? I mean, it's it's a big role, you know, because like Coach Gross said, we got a lot of young guys, especially in the O-line room, and I feel like we're a young team overall. And, you know, I feel like going through those bye weeks, it, you know, we need a leadership to step up, and I feel like I stepped up, you know, leadership-wise on the offense, you know, getting everybody on the same page because, I mean, leadership goes a long way because I took so much from, you know, guys like Coach Gross talked about, Justin Lee and Dylan Klein and all them, and, I didn't really see it that that much, you know, when I was when I was younger, you know, I was a little hard headed, but now as an older guy you see it, you know, how much the little things really matter, you know, whether it be the right stuff to work out, you know, anything, being on time to practice, all that. It's just I feel like I tried to narrow that down these past two weeks and I think it's paid off. Uh, for both the players, just one last thing. Can you talk about what you did this weekend? Uh, I just I sat around and relaxed because, you know, we got nine weeks straight and uh like Coach Cross said, you know, we got two at home games, which is huge for us. And uh, I just really watched football, hung out with the girlfriend, and uh, I didn't do much at all. Just relaxed, had my feet up. And I really did basically the same thing. Uh, just watched film, watched games on Saturday, and that's about it. Can't catch your attention. Uh, I was watching the Alabama game, but it wasn't. It. it <laughs> It got ugly quick. Lost the attention. Yeah. <laughs> Jalen, how big was it? Uh, half a minus eight yards rushing. Oh, that was huge. That was huge for us. Uh, I feel like everybody's buying in to the process and really believing in our defense now. And I feel like everybody's fitting gaps, trying to make the plays that they need to make. They're not trying to do too much. Are you taking McCandless' role? Are you talking all the time? <laughs> no, nah, not, not talking too much. Uh, when the coaches recruited you, they talked about what a good player you could be. You sort of waited your time with yeah. this nice night, starting lineup, and, and being out there. It's nice now to finally be out there, you know. It's nice. Well, Coach Cross, he's, he's gotten better every year, it seems like. What have you seen of his development? Well, he's handled the the process, you know, really well. You know, he's been patient. Uh, he's he's seen where he had to get better at. He's gotten better. He's taken coaching, and uh, you know, he always had the talent to play. And, and a lot of times, you got to just grow up. And I think he's matured in a lot of ways. 
He's matured as a student. He's matured as a person. He's matured as a player. So uh, it's been fun to kind of watch that process and uh, just to see him out there playing. And athletically, we always knew he had the ability to be a great player. I, I think he can be one of the best we've had around here. So I think he's going to have a great year. You know, and uh, like I said, he's doing things the right way. And like I said, I think the older you get, the more games you play in, the better you get. So. Um, I think it was an advantage for him maybe not to have to play as early, you know, and I think that's the, the program we built is you don't have to play guys too early. You know, like I said, it's not good to be sitting there playing true freshman and redshirt freshman. That's not the situation you want to be in. You want to be a little, little older, more veteran than that. And like I said, but he has handled, I think, adversity and, and uh, you know, success all the same way. And believe it or not, he'll tell you he should be our punt returner. You know, he likes to get back there and catch punts. He's, he's just an all-around athlete, right, Skiz? Okay. But we, have, we have a lot of fun. He has a lot of fun practicing. I, I see him get out there every day with a smile on his face, and, you know, he's really excited about going to practice and getting better. And he's always been that way, no matter if he was a starter like he is now or if he was a special teams guy or he wasn't playing any of the scout team guys. So, uh, like I said, I've, I've seen him handle that process really well and, and developmental. How, how do you think you've handled the, the time that you, you kind of had to wait your turn? Uh, I feel like I had a lot of growing up to do when I first got here. But uh, all in all, I feel like it was a good thing, me having to wait. Uh, but I feel like I handled it pretty well. And, yeah. Are you surprised by your tackle total so far? A little bit, a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Coach, I get the impression you're not surprised. At, at his I'm not, calls. not at all. And he'll tell you too. It's it's kind of like what a running back would tell you sitting here with O line. It's you got a lot of a bunch of big guys up here in front of him making eating up blocks, and he's able to make those plays. And you know, and that's what he's expected to do. But he's done a really good job of doing that. I mean, you know, the key to playing, you know, linebacker is you know know the piece of puzzle you got to fit, so know the gap that you got to be in, and. You can't sit here and tell you how complicated that is. It really sounds easy when you're sitting there watching a game or you're talking about a game, but there's there's so many different calls we have. It's very, very complex. And then the formation the offense comes out in, and then they get up there, and I'm going to start making his head swim. You know, they start motioning, they shift, and that all changes. So you may have – you know, this gap out of this call, out of this formation, and then right before the ball changes, they come in motion, and that change is totally to what gap he's got. So his football IQ, I think, has went up, and he's really studied the game and, you know, watched a lot of tape, and just uh, he's really playing smart football. So that goes into the tackles. He's been in the right spot, and he's got good guys in front of him playing, and he's made the tackles, you know. So fundamentally, you got to be all that as a player. you got to be able to, one, you know, have the ability to get there to make the tackle, and you got to be able to make the tackle. But then you got to have the knowledge to get yourself to that spot. So there's a lot of stuff that goes into that stuff. And I'm very proud of, you know, how he's, how he's uh, you know, handling himself as a player. So you're going to let him return a punt Saturday? Oh, God, he, we wouldn't be able to get his head through the door. So I don't, I don't, I don't know. We might, we might not need to do that. He can catch it, though. I have seen him catch it. I did it in practice in high school. Yeah. <laughs>